last weekend I went to a couple of bookshops in London and I thought why not bring you guys along just got a bit of footage about three minutes long of each of the bookshops I went in and I'm just going to be doing a voiceover about my overall thoughts and opinions about that bookshop and whether I'd recommend it and then at the end of that I'll quickly go over some books that I contemplated buying and then three books I did buy. I'm just still on the fence with the ones I was contemplating so I need people if you have read any of these books please tell me if they're worth it or not but yeah hope you enjoy. So first we have the Riverside Bookshop on Tooley Street. This is opposite London Bridge Station and I can't believe I've never seen this place because I'm in London Bridge all of the time but I'm so happy I stumbled across it. This bookshop was so cute. It stocked a mixture of new releases and your favourite fiction, non-fiction, classics and poetry. I didn't film too much downstairs because it was on the smaller side and it started to get quite busy. So we spent most of our time upstairs. I would say this was the perfect size shop because I felt like I could actually browse all the books in there and I didn't feel stressed out or rushed and I feel like that's so important when going to a bookshop. Overall vibe was relaxed, calm, the staff were so lovely they seemed to really want to connect with their customers and I was able to find two books on my 24 books I want to read in 2024, Masters of Death and Babel. I literally can't wait to read these books. The only downside I would say was that the romantic section was very, very small, but I would so recommend this bookshop. You have to go. It's such a great vibe. The second place, okay, this is an absolute fail. <laughs> which is Henry Ford's Books Store. That is all the content I got in this place. <laughs> I'm just gonna quickly pop this in here, but this was on Charing Cross Street on our way to Foyle's Bookshop. <laughs> and yeah, as you can tell, I go in and already like straight away, the employee is just giving me some side eye and it's just not the vibe to film in. It's got classical books and like a lot of first editions so you have, if you're into bookstores like that this is the place for you it's got a lot of old books in there not really many modern ones and i think it specializes in getting like first editions and stuff like i saw a hardback harry potter um the first one and it was 170 pounds and it was in like this covering to keep it protected so yeah that's the kind of vibe it is in there not what i was looking for that day and it was just a random walk in and then we went straight back and got on course. <laughs> now here we are at the absolute monster of a bookstore, Foils on Charing Cross Road. This is honestly the biggest bookstore I've ever visited. I had an amazing time there. I don't think I've ever seen so many books in one location in my life. It has six floors and each floor has a different type of genre or theme. For example, the first floor is fiction and it has literally every genre you'd like there. Crime, literal criticism, science fiction, fantasy, romance. You think of it, they've got it. <laughs> Then like the second floor is art supply, CDs, vinyls. On the fifth floor, it has a cafe, which we spent a bit of time in to discuss what books to read. And it's so nice in there. You can get toasties, cakes, a bit of wine, which was a lovely addition to the day. And on the ground floor, they had best selling books and a manga section, which I freaking love manga. And here I am trying to find my favorite genre shoujo. Even though it was a bit chaotic in there, it was my favorite bookstore of the day because of the cafe. And I was able to find a book I've been dying to read this year. And I haven't been able to find it in any other bookstore, which you will see later in the video. Even though Foils was my favorite, I will 100% go back to the Riverside bookstore because I found some books in there that I know I would never ever find in foils because all the popular ones are brought to the front. There's so many books you kind of get overwhelmed. Oh, and I found out that foils is owned by Waterstones and I feel like Waterstones is like monopolizing everything at the moment. I want to shop more independents. I went into foils thinking it was an independent but then when I researched it after, it is not. It used to be an independent, but then it got sold out in like 2018 or something. 
and they the only agreement was keep the foil's name but anyway i'm going on a ramble now but yeah that was my favorite bookstore because it had every genre and if you're someone like me who literally reads so many different types of books plus freaking love manga this place has everything it also has a really nice cafe at the top and i wanted to film in there but it was packed and people are eating and i didn't feel like it was the place to film but the food was really nice we had some wine cake shared a toasty and it was just such a nice little pit stop where my friend sally and i could discuss what our next book club book will be and discuss what books we'll be buying today because there was a lot on the list which i'll be going through right now there's about five books i contemplated buying but didn't and i'm gonna go over why i nearly bought them and a bit about their plot but all in all i just need the push to buy them if you have read any of these please i need to know if i should get them because all of them were massive contenders for book reading with my friend sally and i'm still thinking about some of them now so i need affirmation for me to be like get it so then i can cave and just order it <laughs> so the first one was so I'll forget, I've written these down because I'm terrible with memory. Um, the Night and Its Moon by Piper CJ. Now, what drew me to this one was the fact that it was a trilogy because I could see all three of them um, next to each other. And I have been dying for a good fantasy um, fay. I mean, I've got so many books I need to read, which are fantasy, but because I'm craving it, it literally sang to me when I saw it and I read the synopsis and it's basically about sisters one of them's Faye, one's not and they base they get separated one to an assassin's um group in the mountains and the other to get sold to this king and I think it's about how they might get back together or their journeys and yeah just about their lives it just sounded so good and it's a trilogy and I love it when I know there's three and they're all already out. I don't have to wait for anything. I can just smash them out. Next is a book I've seen all over my socials. And when I saw it in person, mm, the cover looks so good. And that's Feybound by Sarah L. Arifi. I was this close to buying that book. It sounds so up my street. I'm a sucker for Fey. I'm a sucker for a Fey fantasy romance. And this sounds hella good. So this is about two sisters who are humans and i think one of them's a really badass warrior and basically i'm not sure why but they get exiled and when they're in exile they stumble across the fey lands or realm or i'm not sure what it's called in this book let me have a check quickly oh they stumble across the fey court which have been like mysterious and not really known or heard of in centuries or something and i think it's about them deciding who they're faithful to like themselves or the faker or the humans that's all i know i'm assuming there's some romance in there I bloody hope so i've seen it over socials people are really gassing this book up again though i always get so hesitant is it an overhyped book and it's not actually good or is it worth the hype tell me in the comments below next Oh, another this close by and it is Yumi and the Nightmare Painted by Brandon Sanderson. This cover drew me in. It, it's beautiful and the story sounds beautiful and even there's a note by Brandon Sanderson right when you open the book and it explains how this story came to be. And it's even that is beautiful. Oh, I just really, really want to read it. I'm currently reading the Mistborn series. Uh, so if you've read it again, please let me know. So it's about Yumi who lives a strict life and then this painter guy, I think his name is Painter. <laughs> He's not a painter, but about him like living a lonely life and he always wanted to be a hero. And I don't know how, but their lives end up being intertwined. Boom, just looked really good. Then the next one, I can't get away from this book, is every single bookshop at the forefront. And that is Bunny by Mona Awad and... I know I keep saying about the covers, but it's literally neon bright pink. You cannot miss this book. I can't gauge what this book is really about. I know I didn't realise it was fantasy, but it is. And 
it's about this girl who goes to uni and she wants to get into this sorority, I think, and then she ends up getting invited and basically she finds out all about the sorority. And I think it's a bit twisted. It reminds me of a bit of Mean Girl Centrinium's, but with like violence and gore. <laughs> Am I getting that wrong? I don't know. It says fantasy in the genre and I can't get what's fantasy about it which makes me even more intrigued to read it it looks good i'm not gonna lie i'm very close to buying it like all of these so the next one looks so sweet it's in the name sweet bean paste by durian sukugoa i hope i'm pronouncing that right i have tried to look that name up and it was a bit of a mission to find someone saying the second name basically the story follows a like an ex-criminal who is um a drunk and he opens up this shop selling a sweet treat called Doriaki and it follows him and this elder lady coming into the store who has disfigured hands and she ends up being able to make this the best amazing sweet bean paste and I think it's just about their friendship it's an age gap friendship and that's basically what the synopsis made me feel like it was it sounds really sweet I've heard really good things about it it just sounds very original. Hopefully that might be one that I add to the list. Who knows? And the last one is Death by Laura Falassa. And yeah, this one looked good. It's a dark romance and I really want to get into dark romance. Dark romance fantasy, probably more than dark romance, but either or would be good for me. <laughs> However, this was the fourth book in the series so then i quickly put it down and there wasn't a number one there so yeah if you know of that series i'm not sure what the series was called because as soon as i saw it was book four i was like if you like can vouch for that series let me know because then i'm more likely to look into it a bit more <laughs> so now down to the books that i did buy <laughs> yeah. i am so so happy the book of Azriel by amber v nicole mm, mm, mm. this one is in my 24 books read 2024 and this just only came out in january in england and it's been out in other countries i think america i'm not sure how many others since last may and the reviews i've seen of this are sublime i don't even know if that's a word sublime i think it is <laughs> but are so good and i've heard it's real enemies to lovers not they fall in love and all of that shebang in the first book and it's a like a little enemies oh i don't like your dad blah 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 whatever this is proper enemies to lovers and i'm not going to go into it because i've gone into this in my previous video so if you've watched that, you will know how happy I am that this was in foils and I did buy it. I can't wait to start it. <laughs> now, the other two books I didn't actually buy in foils because one of them was so expensive. It was like £16. And as soon as I looked on the internet, I could get it for £10 in other places. And I could get it on World of Books which it arrived today so i'm gonna quickly do a little unboxing of one book so <laughs> it's not really that special but i don't know how you guys feel about about that like books being inflated in price depending on the bookstore i don't think it's right and i think this is why people are buying less in bookshops because they can get it cheaper online i'd like to know your opinion of that i did get it from world of books oh it's not actually the book I thought it was. It's the other book. <laughs> so I'll quickly put it here because I was just about to show you, but it's not actually that book. But the book that I was referring to is A Court This Cruel and Lovely by Stassa Stark. And oh, I cannot wait for this. Mm. You know how I said I was missing fame and fantasy? This is it, people. This is it. So in this world, humans, before they're born, they all have powers, I believe. And this God takes that power. And if that power remains in you when you're born, you're deemed like, like a weird or, oh, that's it. You're known as corrupt. 
and I think the main character she's in hiding and she has got powers but then she gets found out and she's on the run basically and she makes a deal with this guy and his mysterious friend and the story unfolds from there. Haven't really seen it on any of my socials but my friend Sally said it's been all over her bookstagram and people are saying it's good so really really excited for that one and it was 15 pounds in store 10 pounds online from world of books i mean it's a no-brainer for me and then the third book was the second book in the wolf den series the house with the golden door by elodie harper I've done a review, a one minute review, which I'll link in the description box of my opinions of the first in this first book in this trilogy. And I won't say anything about this book because it will just give massive spoilers away from the first book. But I would recommend this. It's about this woman, the first book, about this woman who gets sold um, to a Pompeii brothel. And it's about her life there and how she's determined to get out, basically. It's very good. I'm really excited for the next book. And also, this was like £6 world of books, £10 in store. So this is why I'm shopping less in bookshops. It's like bookshops are great for me to browse and catalogue what I would like to read. And then I mainly buy on world of books because it's cheaper and I can get them secondhand most of the time. Or from other book places that don't cost like £15 for one book. But anyway, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the bookstore content. I didn't really film loads in the bookshops because it's just books. <laughs> so let me know if you actually liked that version of me doing the voiceover, or do you want like a more in-depth view of the bookshop and like all the floors, etc. because I'm definitely gonna be doing more of these videos. So any feedback on the way I filmed this video would be much appreciated and then I can film it how you'd like to see it. I hope you're having a great day and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!